This is a weekly catch up, a weekly sewing week, sewing weekly with me report um, a video. <sighs> okay, that's gonna be enough. time of the day my lovely sewing friends this is Sloth and Dorky's channel my name is Elisa I am back with my sewing week video I think I'm gonna make it it hasn't been that long since my last video where I told you about my plans I have cut out and got my teeth into the jeans already I will pop in the footage where I'm showing you how far I've gotten with them. I've realized that I'm actually really love making jeans as well. And not just shirts, but also jeans. I think the more you make of something, the more you start enjoying it, the more, the easier you navigate the process. I think the more room there is for a bit of like a relaxation and cre creativity within it. So this is what's happening with me <laughs> and the jeans. Um, so once I finish with them and do my little mini capsule collection, I think in my next set of plans um, garments will also be a denim pair of denim trousers. I've already decided. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to go and do some more sewing and I'm going to show you the result later. So just to show you what I'm up to, um, I cut out my Kamini jeans. As discussed in my plans video, out of this blue um, denim, so um, this is all the bits and bobs for it. Um, I marked the pockets with threads because they come out easily. You don't have to worry about marking your fabric with something you can't take out. Um, then I prepared the bits um, for interfacing. So these are the pockets, the tops of the pockets, um, the um, waistband, the um, pocket line where the pockets are attached on the front, also the bits where the zipper goes, and what else do we have? Yeah, and that's pretty much it. And once we do the waistband, we also have to put um, a non stretch interfacing strips along these bits as well. Um, and my carpet looks like I've murdered uh, a piece of fabric over it. Look. <laughs> Hello! Um, I've received four patterns that I've ordered and I wanted to show you. This is the random selection. In not, not any particular order, I got Vogue. Uh, 1783. I've been shying away from this pattern for a while because um, it has loads of parts, so you have to cut out loads of parts. But I think I think the more I was looking at it, the more I got um, I fell in love with this dress and how it creates this beautiful vertical line and how regal it looks really so I think I finally cracked and I've ordered this one <laughs> I didn't have fabric for it for my size I would have to have six meters point six point three meters of 150 meter wide fabric so in unless I find something relatively cheap or on sale it would have it would be quite an expensive dress but we'll see second one I bought this one um it's Vogue 8577. Um, I do remember Shan from Kidnish Behavior talking about making this dress. I don't remember what she said. She said it was beautiful, but it took her a long time to do the hem, I think she said. I don't know. However, 
I don't mind doing the hem. Um, I don't like, I don't mind ironing it and pinning it and basting it, whatever. I quite enjoy doing that. So hopefully that is not going to be a problem for me. Um, and I'm thinking of maybe making a UB. Um, and it has really, really pretty details, like the gather in the shoulder, um, and lovely, like, a pocket details. Um, so I'm thinking making it in maybe a plain fabric, um, and doing something fun with, like, the buttons and maybe the top stitching for the pockets or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Then the second one, the third one, the second one, <laughs> one, two, two... <laughs> two um is um a vintage vogue 8875 i have this pattern in a smaller size range but the more i was looking at it the more i thought you know what i do i think that the um this kind of code is called redding redding dot unless i'm i'm completely interpreting in my own kind of universe i think if i'm wrong i'm gonna of the, the um, name for it. Um, I like the idea of making a nice coat that can be worn over something in the summer. If you go somewhere in the evening, it be, can be thrown on. It doesn't have any closures, but like two ties at the front. Um, and you can, I think you can interchange the, um, the collar, top collar, because it's like a double collar. Um, I don't know. In my head this is what's happening and also the um, the dress the dress is quite cute I looked up on Instagram um, of other people who made this dress and they look super classy and surprisingly on trend so I bought this pattern in bigger size range so I can use it now and maybe or maybe not I'll use it this summer we see <laughs> we're gonna see and the last one I bought um, is, oh, did I mention it was um, a Vogue pattern sale? Um, I bought it um, at Jay Cots, Jay Cots, but you can also buy on the original Something Delightful website. So I, I would imagine, I only want it for anyway. Um, so the next one is, the uh, last one is Vogue 1717 and it's a Chanel inspired um, separate. It's the two lengths of jackets it's a wrap skirt and the trousers if you look at the skirt i think it has lining um what i liked about it although it's shown as quite short on here but you can probably lengthen it and because it's quite full really i think it wouldn't be a problem just lengthening in it and making it like i like my skirts below the knee but you would still classify as a pencil like or a straight skirt um in terms of the silhouette width of it so i also like the trousers um i think i would lengthen them as well unless not i don't know i would have to make a toile and just check it out but i do quite like the aesthetics of this and this uh, i don't know um i feel like i could have um a lot of fun with this pattern um, and use it for something summery and wintry. Always a win. So, um, yeah. I haven't showed you my pattern purchases for a while, so I thought I'd give you a little bit of a sneak peek into what I'm ordering. I also absolutely have to show you what I have received a couple of days ago. I was waiting for... Um, me to have a weekend to film this during the day. These are my my tailor hands. Look at that. This is um, the shoulder one, and the quality is absolutely stunning. Um, I've ordered them from Ukraine from Odessa. Um, it's a family held um, family held company. And it's actually heartbreaking because they, they, this is their way of earning um, their living by making these um, tailor hands. Um, and they are, at the moment, you know Odessa's being bombed, but they're making them and they're selling them, sending them all over the world. Um, it took them about one and a half months to get to me. Um, and the box looked like 
it went through um, the hell and back um, and then got through my um, hose box but they are absolutely perfect and damaged this block is it's like the ironing kind of cooling block you know when you iron something then you put that over it to flatten it and give it the shape that you wanted to achieve with the iron um, and it has um, the space for invisible zipper you know, as well so when you're doing the invisible zipper it fits in there and then you iron over it so I thought that was pretty cool and they smell like absolutely amazing of fresh wood and they're just so smooth they've been smoothed to perfection it's absolutely stunning I love it um, this is obviously for um, for your coats and shirts um, to iron your shoulders on I think it can also be used for smaller shoulders maybe children's shoulders on this side as well um, I have to remind myself that all of these can be used in multiple ways for example this one um, I can probably use it to um, iron a seam that goes like that to just iron the middle of a seam and not the seam allowance to be kind of um, iron through you know what I mean um, so these are the three that I got this is the um, one for the sleeve and a trouser leg so this side is for the sleeve I mean I mean they just smell like so beautifully and then if you turn it over then there's a bigger one that you can use for a trouser leg, you know? Um, again, super helpful when you ironing, when you're making a trouser and you have to iron out the seams and the seams kind of overlap so you can see them like transferring the seam allowances through the fabric. Again, amazing. So, um, <laughs> these are my three new addition, additions to my sewing, um, tool collection um, I'm going to put a link to their Instagram I'm not sure if they have a website but I've ordered through the Instagram they are very helpful they respond straight away and um, when you order something they only take the money for their shipping and then bill you later when your parcel goes through the customs out of Ukraine I mean they literally just trust you with the whole order. Um, I couldn't praise them high enough. Um, their communication, the quality of their products, and they have so much, so many of these um, on their on their um, Instagram. Like I've only chose these three because I didn't really know how soon they would get here or what they would be like. But haven't seen them now. I mean. I'm tempted to just about go and order everything else they have. <laughs> um, gorgeous, just gorgeous. Um, it's our family um, in Odessa. Highly recommended. Hello from Belt. Hello from Ted. Um, what I wanted to show you is uh, my lovely boyfriend went to IKEA today and look what he brings me. It's a little little baby orchid and he picked out a little pink um, pot for it. He said that loads of people were looking at these pink pots and grabbing them and he said I had to grab one for you because I knew you'd love it. I absolutely love it. Look how pretty it is. <laughs> I think this one, um, because it's so tiny, is gonna just sit in this corner here on my sewing table and it's just gonna um, say hello to me every time I'm doing my sewing. I mean, not that I don't have enough orchids, like, look at this. Look at this orchid invasion. There's one here. <laughs> um, and also, there's more going on here. I do have this kind of purple-white, purple-white um, thing going on, don't I? And another thing, I've order that came today I paid 50, 50 pounds for it I think this is um, a form band bias tape it's a 
a interface and bias tape that's been reinforced with a stitch that runs along along the edge. Um, and basically what you do with this one is you um, pin this to the pocket openings and neckline openings and things like that to stabilize them. Um, but at the same time you can form it because it's bias cut, so you can form it um, onto the like um, rounded rounded openings. Um, and I've ordered 100 meters, it's quite a lot, but I do tend to make loads of like shirts and trousers and things like that and dresses, so it literally will be used for everything. So this is it. This is my should last me for a while, I hope. Um, I think I'd like to order another box of just a straight one because this is bias one, but um, there's one that's just straight, it's also reinforced. Um, I might, I might. Showing you my pockets. Um, I finished the pockets. These are the front ones. There's lining and everything. Um, and then these are the back of my jeans. So I've attached the yoke already, I top stitched it. I top stitched the top of a pocket and I've pinned it in in place now. What I do is I overlock it and then I baste it and then I iron it and then uh, they lie really really flat even in these thickish kind of places they are quite fairly flat um, and then I just go ahead and pin them where um, I left the marks before and then uh, I think what I'm going to do I'm going to baste them again and iron them again so that they lie flat and then um, I'll top stitch them around the corner. Um, I'll top stitch them um, on the three sides and obviously leave that open. Um, and that's going to be my pockets done. And then I can move on to putting my trousers together and trying them on. <laughs> Hi everybody. This is Tuesday. Um, I did do a little bit of sewing yesterday and this is what I have. So um, this is the back and this is the front. This lining and everything like it should be. Um, I'm most proud of my top stitching in fact. Can I just point out how straight this looks, surprisingly. So, um, today I will be installing the zipper and putting in the belt. I might have a slight problem in the fact that the belt is a little stretchy. I think what I did, I used the interfacing that is a little stretchy as well. I like to use that one because it's softer. Um, so what I might do where I attach the belt on the inside, I might actually use a very thin cotton tape to make it non-stretchy I think because I've tried this on yesterday and it is sits lovely but it, it's a little bit gapy like at the back um, and this fits just perfectly so I think I'm just gonna try and like stabilize it maybe um, the best I can and hopefully that will be bringing me closer to finishing my first item. Um, this jeans is gorgeous, <laughs> it's just so nice. Exeter fabrics. Um, wow, I mean, 
the quality is outstanding. I can't wait to start wearing these jeans. It's so comfortable. Um, they sit quite snug on top of a leg, um, but because it's stretch, it's just going to be so comfortable to sit and walk and move in them. Um, I just absolutely love the colour and I forgot to tell you that what I'm using is the top stitching. Um, I went little unconventional choice of silver. Um, it's a 30 meters in this one and I got two but it's pretty clear that one spool is enough so I might use the second one for another pair of jeans maybe I think I have a lighter denim as well um, so I'm, I'm very pleased with my progress and I'm going to just do a little bit more sewing and hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to maybe try it on for you preliminary <laughs> just like show the fit not the whole thing if you know what I mean so I hope you're as excited as I am about these jeans I'm a little bit tired um, I get so tired after work I don't know I think it's just my like stress maybe um, working its way out of my system or something I don't know but um, I will see you all really soon Okay, I tried on the jeans and they are gapy at the back. So what I had to do is to unpick my temporary stitches here and take them in this much. Do you see where my stitching is? This is how much I'm taking in. And also, um, this much. You see this um, stitch here? So I'm literally taking it from here to about here. So it's um, this much. So I'm just about to unpick the middle here. Um, stitch, stitch, um, overlock off the extra new seam allowance and try it on again. And maybe I'll film a little bit on how it sits after my alteration. Hi! So, I'm trying on the jeans and I think it's looking pretty good, especially in the back. So, in the back, that um, I think I fixed it. Um, it no longer gapes. On top which is perfect so um, I have to crack on with finishing my belt doing the uh, button here doing the um, bottoms of my legs and finishing these jeans already so I can start with um, the next item on my list It's finally end of the week. Um, this is Friday today. Um, I'm working from home and I start um, and I start at eight on a Friday, so that's half an hour later than usual. So I have a little bit of time to just record a little hi for you and to say that um, I've had a productive week. I've um, completed my jeans and I wore them to work as well on Wednesday. I'm super comfortable um, and also I've done one knitted top so I'm going to show you quickly. I'm not going to show you the top because the top is in a wash. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you the jeans okay. Let's see. So um, I've installed the button I have to say, as my machine is not friends with buttonholes at the moment, it's not the prettiest one of all. At least it doesn't fray. And it is a little bit tight because, again, my machine decides um, um, autonomously on what 
size it wanted to make, um, regardless of what I punch in. Um, this is a zip-on, golden, and also I've decided to install, hold on, I decided to install these little guys. Um, so they're golden. There's a lining. And lining is actually, look what I'm wearing. And look what the lining is, exactly the same fabric that I had left over from my shirt. <laughs> um, so yes, um, I've already lost one of them. So obviously whether they're not very good quality or I didn't install them correctly, I don't know. I don't know, I don't have the special machine to kind of put them in place professionally, so um, this is the inside, just loads of overlocked seams and yeah, and then the hems, I was going to turn up once like I did and I was going to turn it up again but then I tried it on and it just looked so beautiful and long that I decided to leave it so I have my temporary base thing that I've left in there which I think again I keep repeating it I know you might think it's unprofessional looking or whatever but I think it's super cute to have your base in it I don't know there's something about it um yeah this is the back pocket And yes, um, you will have to wait till my capsule reveal to have to see them on me. But for now, these are the jeans. Um, all done, I think. I got from this. I'll replace it. I have I've have a, like a couple of extras. <laughs> and I've also wanted to say that I've made this um, this top, and it's Vicky So's. I think it's like a Veronica top, I think. Um, but this is this is it, just like a simple top. Um, I had to use the zigzag stitch on it to kind of keep it in place. I don't think it looks very nice. I don't like this finish and zigzag stitch. I don't know. There's something not quite to my liking about it. So. Um, the second, the second top I've made um, is bright like a royal blue, so um, when I wash it I'll just have to show you in maybe my next video. But basically I've done the jeans and I've done two knit tops um, and I've also finished my other trousers, which I've, I haven't shown you yet. These are like a wide leg, like a black and white hound tooth, like in grey, um, hound tooth like um, pattern. So I've done that. And I've also, I don't know if you remember my frugal frocks from ages and ages ago. Um, it's, um, it's um, uh, like a stretch velour. Uh, fabric and I was supposed to have pockets with fringe on them um, and I tried try pinning them on and they didn't quite look right but then I've realized that you know how that trim I'll just show you hold on okay so you know how the trim has that kind of the um, edge and this edge was supposed to go on the inside of the pocket but then I realized the reason it's not looking really nice because you don't see where the pocket ends and the garment begins so I put this edge on the outside um, and now I think it looks pretty cool actually just like this so um, I've attached my these are my two pockets I've attached my two pockets. There's one. Um, 
and there's another one. And um, I will be wearing this on top of my, I think like a summer outfit maybe for going out. Um, just like a chuck on kind of second layer for the evening maybe when it gets a bit cooler. So that's another thing um, that I've kind of completed that I'm going to wear now because I haven't worn it out once yet. So I think it's been a productive week. Um, next week, next on my sewing table is going to be my stripy shirt. I've ironed the fabric and just about to cut it. Um, not about, but later on tonight. And I will think, I think I'm going to after that do my purple trousers. Um, and I, perhaps I might rethink the colourful shirts only because I have more fabric than I thought I would have and I might might be able to squeeze out some dress, some dress or something out of them, I don't know. But it's a possibility. But then I'm still going to be making the white cardigan. So I'll still have my capsule wardrobe, um, just probably was not as many shirts. But I don't know, we'll see, we'll have to see. Um, Anyway, this is what I've been up to. Um, I think I've showed you pretty much most of my sewing events throughout the week. Um, I hope you're having a good time and I will see you in my next video. Meanwhile, stay beautiful and sew something gorgeous. Love you all. Bye.